application security, what does that actually mean for a developer? Sounds like it should be obvious, but that's part of the reason why we exist here in the DevNet zone um, at Cisco Live this year, which is rad. I love the new space. Um, and Alex, here with me, I, I wanted to talk a bit about the idea of some of the customers that we work with and companies in general. They think about acronyms and terms that are floating around from the big, big companies, I won't mention names, that are like cloud application security, and there's all these other acronyms that kind of surround that world. But at the end of the day, as those things can all sound like really big concepts. And what we want to actually help people with and what we want to talk to them about are things that we can do on a daily basis. So to start with, from the perspective of a developer working at one of our enterprise customers, or any enterprise for that matter, and thinking about the concept of app security, cloud management, migration of certain apps and resources into a more non-company owned platform, you know, cloud hosted, whatever that happens to look like. Where do you like to start off in that conversation with a customer to kind of help them just understand what we're trying to get at? Yeah, I think the, the, the first thing I always tell people is there's five million acronyms. Is it, don't stress, it's all right. <laughs> you don't need to know all those things, right? What I would tell them is look, if you're running a, a, a service or a product or anything running in the cloud and you're using Agile, then you already know what you need to know, right? Security is just like any other aspect of your project, right? It's just like quality, it's just like bugs, triage, just like custom, it's just, just another one of those things. And so really it's all about, are you taking specific proactive proactive action over time, right? In every sprint to improve your security posture? That's really the only question, right? So it's, think of it as a vector, up or down, and then how long that vector is, right? So every sprint, am I making my security posture better in this sprint? Is it staying the same? Or gosh, making it worse? Yeah. Very simply, worry about that, you're fine, right? Because it's about progress over time. Yeah, I, you know, I love that, and I, what I, I find most helpful about describing it in that way is so often people hear the term, and you know, just to say it, hear the word Cisco, and they think, oh, when you're saying security, you're meaning the firewall folks that are over here. And yes, yeah. yeah we love them, they're great. We do. Yeah. It's very much though a yes and, as opposed to a yes but. Okay. And I think one of the challenges so many people encounter is they hear Cisco and they're not sure, like, what are we talking about? But there's a lot of great developers here, folks who understand how app development work. And I think in this context, the idea of security, and I think it even brings back those, you know, bigger topics like shift left, the whole concept behind those things, or what they're really supposed to mean is, bringing security earlier on into, we'll say development process, but it's not just software development. It's the idea of like bringing the, the ideas of security, how do I secure something, whatever that means, earlier into the thinking process or the development process. Absolutely, I mean, first of all, we mostly talk to enterprise class customers, of course, because we're here at Cisco, and they're all over the map. I mean, some of our customers are amazingly sophisticated, and I learn things from them about the way to run a secure site, which is always great, <laughs> right? And then we have people that are like, gosh, we're just, I, I literally had a meeting with an oil and gas company that's saying, we're deploying our first cloud app next week. What should we do? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> we can do this. I mean, it's a great movie. I saw the whole movie twice. You're going to love it, you know? So we, we have all those things. And, and we ourselves are a big enterprise company. Some Cisco people are very cloud-centric, some Cisco people are not cloud-centric at all. And so all those things are going on. So what we, what we tell people is, look, you know, as you're going through your journey, think about how you're gonna work with this, think how you're gonna plan it. From, from our perspective, the, the product side of this is that we really believe in this kind of full stack visibility, right? One of the reasons why we built Panoptica is because you wanna know is, like, Let's say you're using infrastructure as code, let's say you're a Terraform shop, right? You've got a Terraform template sitting in a GitHub repo. If there's a bug in that, re in that repo, whenever you push to prod, that bug's coming with you. So start there, right? Then you go to prod, something happens, and then something happens. And so it's, it's code, it's running infrastructure, it's the way, like in an AWS kit, like the VPC, the way it's configured, that matters. What's inside that VM? Is there malware in there? Are you running a Nginx API gateway? What's going on there, right? And so you have to go all the way from the very top of the stack, all the way down to data, and everything in between. So that can be extremely complex, right? Some of my customers will have 
dozens of tools that go after that. Um, the way we've chosen to solve this problem is to say, well, we think that should be one platform because these, because your attackers aren't really aware of your org chart and they don't care, right? They're like, oh, well, department X is in charge of my data repository and department Z is in charge of my APIs and we don't talk to each other. Uh, the attackers, they talk to each other, right? <laughs> so, you know, you need to know that the API and the, the you know, your Kubernetes pod is configured in a certain way, it's running inside of a VPC, that's configured a certain way, it's running code that comes from here. You know, it turns out that all of those things together form your posture. And so philosophically, we believe that you should look at all those things together. And that's why we built a product like that. Okay, I want to get into the product in a little bit of detail in just a moment, but something you just said, the, the philosophy of approaching this. So in that, that whole statement, what was so interesting to me is, and I've worked at multiple large companies before I came, work, came to work at Cisco, and I know exactly what I mean. There's this team over here that does this thing, and this team over here, I was on the network team. But it's not that we don't talk to each other, we pass a ticket around to each other, and maybe it gets done, it gets thrown over the wall to the other cubicle, maybe it gets done. But when you step back and think about it the way that you're describing it, the whole concept is not just about what are the actual tactical things you're doing at the app layer and the presentation, like these different layers in there to make sure that something is secure, whatever that means at that moment, but also the idea that the fact that you don't have teams that, making assumptions here, but that a company might have not have teams that actively talk to each other to, to see where there's a disconnect and how they're developing those things or how their posture decisions might look different, that in itself, to your point, creates a gap for a malicious person to do something. And it's not just it's not just that you missed putting some control in place. It's that you're not even having a conversation about the fact that there could be an opportunity where a control could help. You're you're not even you don't even leave uh, open yourself to having that conversation. And I think that is the that is the most important part. And yes, Panoptica as an example can help with a lot of these technical things, but I think what you've already been describing is a product like that really should help spur a conversation about what are we missing? What aren't we thinking about in this process? It, it, it's, as always, as, I mean, I've been in this business a long time. It's people process technology in that order, right? If your people are talking and you're working as a team, you're going to be in a much, much, much better position than if you're acting in an isolated, independent manner, right? Sure, you can use my product, and I hope you use my product. But if I had to choose, between you guys working as a team or using my product, go work as a team. You're going to solve this problem, right? Even if you have to solve it manually, you'll solve it. This is definitely an interdisciplinary problem, right? I would be thrilled and surprised if there was one person on your team that had deep knowledge of this entire thing, right? Everything from this complex Go Lang routine that's running here to the way Kubernetes configured, the way networks configured, edge configured. If you have one person that knows all those things, first of all, give them a raise. That's, that's <laughs> tough, right? But collectively, there's somebody on your team that's an expert in every single one of those things. And so what I always say is, you know, hunt in packs, right? This, this is a team sport, because you can, you can be guaranteed that the bad guys are working as a team. Absolutely, we know they are, right? So collectively, if you're, if you're living in these little silos, you're really putting yourself in a tough position, right? Yeah. So setting aside the fact that I prefer to work in these kind of collaborative teams, I just enjoy that, it's more fun. Set that aside for a moment. It's in your best interest, it's, it's preservation to do that. Because it makes you safer, it makes you more secure, it makes you move faster, right? And so yeah, the technology piece of it we can help you with, right? But people in process, I mean we can, we can advise you, we can give you hints, but you know, there's, there's, that's a, as always, yeah. that's the biggest part. Okay, so sort of a one lightning round question I have is, if in all of this we talked about, if you could pick one thing about Panoptica specifically that helps a team when they're thinking about everything that we talked about, if you can pick one, what would, what would be the one thing you want someone to take away and be like, that's something they can legitimately do really well for us? Yeah, I mean, when I use the product, I mean, I use the product myself, we use it, by the way, for our stuff, you know, and eat your own dog food. You know, for me, what I really care about is I care about what, when I am grooming my, my backlog for my sprint, what do I need to move to the top of the groom backlog today? What do I care about today? So when I look at Panoptica, I look at like, for example, like the, the attack path graph. I don't know if you've used the product too much, but basically there's a, 
we produce this attack path graph, and in the graph we show, here's all your vulnerabilities, just usually a depressingly large number, <laughs> thousands. Always is. And then you have you know, attack paths, luckily usually much smaller, and then you have critical, right? So things that could actually be exploited to an attacker today, that are in production today, that have an open door today. Bonk. So I was like, nah, nah, right? And usually it'll go like hundreds or thousands to dozens to a handful. For most customers, that critical, critical list is less than 10. As a, as a program, I'm a product manager, right? So I care about stack rank, I care about, right? And so when I look at that, I say, ah, I can stack rank those 10 things. <laughs> Good, that's a human manageable number, right? So what I would say is, the, the thing that I love about the product, what gets me out of bed in the morning when I talk to people about it, is this is not an overwhelming problem. Right? If I tell you to go fix 4,000 things, where do you start? And I like, no, no, four. There's four things. Oh, okay. Everybody can handle four things, right? Yep. So that's, to me, that's what it's about. It's about wh which of all the stuff I could do, what's the things I must do now? This, go do that. You know, and so if we can get them to that point where it's specific, actionable, right? Going after the most important thing first, that's what I really love. And so for me, when we do that as a product, we're really, really successful, right? People like it. And I, you know, you have customers coming back in production and saying, hey, by the way, <laughs> you know, um, we actually started a video series where we said, we, you know, things in the news, and we took uh, somebody who got hacked, and then we simulated their environment, and then we walked through what a Panoptica customer would have seen if they were being attacked like that. You know, and it's fun to see. Well, actually, you know, you would have seen this, and this would have been on your top of tree, and you would have pulled that off. And so I'm always tr trying to put myself in the head of, you know, I'm the DevOps sick ops person sitting in this scrum team. We're sitting in our sprint planning meeting, right? What do I want my team members to know, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I look at the product, when I design the product, when I try to build new features, I'm always thinking with that, about that poor person. It's like, here's the one, because you're not going to get a three hour discussion with your scrum team. That's not what happens, right? It's like a one hour, you know, uh, you know uh, triage meeting and you're probably gonna get to say three or four things, <laughs> and they're gonna remember one of them, <laughs> right? So it's like, boom, this one, here's so a graph. True. Let's fix yep. this one this sprint. If I can get, if I can get a, a customer to that, uh, that's gonna feel really good. Then that's a big win for us. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, and for everyone else watching, there's so many more sessions coming, lots more videos. If you're here in the DevNet Zone with us, check out the classrooms and the workshops, um, and enjoy the rest of your Cisco Live.